Hi everyone, today we're going to be talk, doing problems involving work non-conserved. So we're going to be, what we're going to be doing is what we learned about at the beginning with energy and work, and we're going to be combining the two in this part of the chapter. So let's get started. You push on a two kilogram block, initially at rest, that's right here, on a friction surface with 10 newtons of force. Okay, 10 newtons of force. Horizontally for five meters on level ground before letting go. Okay, so you push on it for five meters. The block slides into a loop with a radius of 0.5 meters, 0.5 meters, okay? What velocity will the block have at the top of the block? Okay, so we want to find when the block is right here, how fast is it? So what we want to do with problems with work not conserved is we want to write everything. We want to do mechanical energy initial plus work non conserved is equal to mechanical energy final. So I'm going to write everything out. Potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial plus work non-conserved is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. And let's see. At the beginning, is there potential energy? No, it's on the ground. At the beginning, is there kinetic energy? Actually, no, it starts at rest. At the beginning, is there elastic potential energy? No, there's no spring. Okay, so all these are no. But is there going to be work being done by up until this point? Yes, this is getting pushed. So there is a work non-conserved. At the end, is there potential energy? Yes, there is. If there is a certain height. At the end, is there kinetic energy? Yes, it's going to be moving with a certain velocity. That's what we're looking for. At the end, is there elastic potential energy? No, no elastic potential energy. So let's figure this out. Work non-conserved, that's going to be force times displacement times cosine of theta is going to equal mgh final plus one half mv final squared. And we're looking for this v final. Force, 10 newtons, times the displacement, 5, and it's going the same direction, so this is just 1. This is going to equal the mass, which is 2, gravity, 10, and it's going to be reaching a height of 1 meter. So the radius times 2, so that's going to be 1 meter which is plus one half m to v final squared. All right, let's do a little bit of math and let's figure this out. So 50 minus 20 uh, and then the square root of that and then we get 5.48 meters per second. Okay, so that's how fast it is at the top of the loop. Next question, what is the max height that the block reaches? So we want to find what this max height is going to be. A few ways we can do this, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to be doing the same thing we did. Uh, so same thing looking over here because I'm going to start at the very beginning. And since there's no friction or anything like that, I kind of use the same equation to figure this out. So at the very beginning, there's only one thing, work non conserved, getting pushed. And at the end, at the highest point, we should also know there's no kinetic energy because at the highest point, the velocity is equal to zero. So we can do work non conserved is equal to the potential energy final, the highest point. So let's figure this out. Force times displacement times cosine of theta is equal to mgh final. Force is 10 times 5. And we know cosine of zero is just one because the force and displacement go in the same direction is equal to the mass two, gravity 10. And we're looking for the highest point that it's going to reach. So let's look for this. It's going to be 50 divided by 20 and we get 2.5 meters. Okay. All right, I uh, hope that makes sense. There's many ways of doing this one. You could have found what the potential energy and kinetic energy is here and then made that initial and then made this one over here the final. So however you did it is fine, but this is the way I did it. All right, let's go on to the next one. Deep in the forest, a 0 0.017 kilogram leaf falls from a tree and drops straight to the ground. If its initial height is 5.3 meters, okay, so 5.3 meters, and speed landing was 1.3 meters per second, how much non-conserved work was done on the leaf? Okay, same thing. Mechanical energy initial plus work non-conserved is equal to mechanical energy final. PE initial plus KE initial plus EPE initial is 
plus work non conserved is equal to PE fine. I know this is so annoying, but honestly, if you write it all out and go step by step, you'll make less chance for a mistake. So at the beginning, is there potential energy? Yes, it's 5.3 meters high. At the beginning, is there, uh, is there a velocity? No, it drops, uh, falls from a tree and goes straight down. So it just drops to so zero. At the beginning, is there a last potential? No, there's no springs in this problem. Is there going to be work? Yes, we're looking for that work. And that work is actually the work done by air resistance. So we're going to try to figure out what this work done by air resistance is later on. At the end, is there potential energy? No, it's on the ground. At the end, is there a kinetic energy? Yes, it has a speed, 1.3 meters per second. At the end, is there elastic potential energy? No, there's no springs. So let's see this mass, 0 0.017 uh, kilograms, gravity 10, height at the beginning is 5.3 meters, plus the work non-conserved, that's what we're looking for, is equal to 1 half mass, 0 0.017, and then the velocity, 1.3 squared. So now let's find what the work now can serve this. So I'm just going to do the other side, 1.3 squared times 0 0.017 times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.017 times 10 times 5.3. And we get negative 0 0.89 joules. And that should make sense because the air resistance is going to be pushing it up or the force going up, however, it's moving downwards. So it's going to have a negative work done. Okay, and many times work non conserved is going to be negative because it's talking about friction or air resistance or something like that. All right, let's look at the next one. A diver steps off a diving board and drops into the water a depth D. Okay, so this depth D um, below the water surface. The diver comes to rest. Uh, so this height is three meters. Okay. If the non-conservative work done on the diver is negative 5,120 joules, what is the depth D? So this non-conservative work comes from the work of the water or the buoyancy. So that's the resistance from the water. What I first like to do is I like to make the zero line. And the zero line, I'm going to put at the lowest point where the object is going to be. So this is my zero line I'm going to put. So let's now do the potential energy. Uh, oh, sorry, we're going to do the whole equation. Mechanical energy initial plus work non-conserved equals mechanical energy final. I'm not going to write it all out this time because I'm a little annoyed. <laughs> so at the beginning, we have a uh, potential energy. He has a certain height. Uh, he drops, so no kinetic energy, no spring energy. Uh, there is work non-conserved. As he goes, reaches his final point, there's going to be a lot of work non conserved by the water. And at the end, there's no potential energy. He's at the zero line. There's no kinetic energy comes to a stop. There's no elastic potential energy. So everything is actually just zero. So let's figure this out. We have MGH plus work non conserved negative 5120 is equal to zero. So let's see. M is 95. Gravity is 10. And H is the whole length right here. This is H. So that's H. And I'm going to put this to the other side, 5120. And let's figure out what H is. 5120 divided by 950. And we get 5.39 meters. But we only want to figure out what D is. That's what the question is. So if this is 3 meters, we're going to do 5.39 minus 3. And we get 2.39 meters is equal to D. Okay, hope that made sense. Alright, the tricky part was the zero line. So I always suggest putting the zero line at the lowest point the object will be, but you can always put it anywhere, but and you'll get the right answer if you have everything correct. But I like to put it at the lowest point. Alright, let's look at this next one. A block with a mass of 0 0.5 kilogram is forced against a spring, horizontal spring of negligible mass, compressing the spring a distance of 0 0.2 meters. When released, the block moves on a horizontal table for 1 meter before coming to rest. The spring constant is 100 newton per meter. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the tabletop? Alright, let's look at this. Mechanical energy initial plus work non-conserved is equal to mechanical energy final. So at the very beginning, there's going to be elastic potential energy because it's pressing up against the spring. 
It's, there's no height, so no potential energy. It's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy. And then there's, as it travels this way, there's going to be work being done. And that's going to be the work of friction. At the end, it's not moving, so no kinetic energy. It's still on level ground, so no potential energy. And there's no spring on it. There's nothing stretching or compressed, so there's no elastic potential energy. So this is just zero. So we're looking for the coefficient of friction. But let's just kind of write this out. So we have elastic potential energy, one half K, and it says K is 100 Newton per meter. X, it's stretched 0.2 meters, 0.2 squared, uh, is uh, plus the force of friction times the displacement, so it, it moves one meter, times cosine. And what's going to happen is the force of friction is going to the left, as it moves to the right, so it's going to be 180 degrees. So cosine 180 is equal to zero. With that, let's figure out what the force of friction is. Force of friction uh, is going to be, okay, let me do the other side, 0.2 squared times 100 times 0.5. Then what we get is the force of friction is going to equal 2 newtons. So force of friction, we should know, is equal to normal force times mu. We're looking for what this mu is, the coefficient of friction. So 2 is equal to normal force, uh, which is going to be the same as the force of gravity in this case, 5 times mu. So 0 0.5 times 10 is just 5. Now we get mu is equal to 2 divided by 5, and we get 0 0.4. All right, last question here. A 62 kilogram skier is moving at 6.5 meters per second on a frictionless horizontal snow covered plateau when she encounters a rough patch 4.3 meters long. The coefficient of friction between this patch and her skis is 0.3. After crossing the rough patch and return to friction free snow, she skis down an icy frictionless hill 2.5 meters high. How fast is the skier when she gets to the bottom of the hill? Alright, let's draw this all out. So, top of the hill. Rough patch going down a hill. Okay, rough patch is 4.3 meters. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. And we want to find out how fast the skier is at the bottom. Okay, we know at the beginning the skier is going 6.5 meters per second. And we want to find what this V final is. Okay. To try to do is I'm first going to try to figure out what this friction is. What I should know is the force of friction is going to equal the normal force, which in this case is the same as force of gravity, 620, times uh, the coefficient of friction, 0.3, and this will give me 620 times 0.3, 186 newtons. Okay. Okay, so now let's try to write things out. Mechanical energy initial plus work now conserved is equal to mechanical energy final. Oh, and I should say she's at a height of 2.5 meters, right? So this is 2.5 meters. Okay, and this is the zero line right here. So at the beginning, there is a potential energy, uh, 2.5 meters high, so there is potential energy. There is kinetic energy, the skier is moving. There's no elastic potential energy, and there's no spring. There is going to be work done, the friction, so plus work of friction. Let me just put this out. Uh, and at the end, she's, there's no potential energy all the way at the ground. There is kinetic energy moving quickly, and there's no elastic potential energy. So let's figure this out. Mass, 62. Gravity, 10. Height, 2.5. Plus 1 half m. V squared, moving at the beginning, 6.5 meters per second squared, plus the work of friction, which is going to be the force of friction, 186. Displacement, the force of friction acts for 4.3 meters. And cosine, and again, it's going to be cosine 180, because as she's moving to the right, force of friction is going to the left. So that's 180 is equal to 1 half m, 62, v squared. And we're looking for what that v is. Whew, a lot going on. Let me try to simplify this. 62 times 10 
times 2.5. So that's going to be 1550 plus 6.5 squared times 62 times 0.5. 1309.75 plus 186 times 4.3 times negative 1. Uh, this is going to be negative 800 is equal to 31b squared. All right, let's see if we could simplify this. 1550 plus 1309.75 minus 800 divided by 31 square root of that and we get velocity at the bottom of the hill is 8.15 meters per second. All right, guys, I hope all of that made sense. Uh, if not, I know this could be a bit challenging, so watch any of that back. I also probably went a little bit faster than I should. So watch it back if, you're, uh, if you got confused at any point. And we're going to do part two next.